Hello and welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Business Analytics here at uh, Salve. And I'm going to be going through a, hopefully a relatively brief video just to give you an introduction to the course and to take you through some of the initial topics that we'll, that we'll be going through in this uh, seven week course on, on analytics. So first of all, a little bit about who I am. Um, I am my, 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 my day job is I'm a senior program manager at Advanced Government Services, which is actually headquartered out of Annapolis, Maryland. And we do work primarily with state and federal governments in terms of technical assistance and programmatic assistance in healthcare and in major, in major data engagements. And I've had a long career in healthcare data and analytics for, for about the past 25 years or so. And pri prior to joining um, Advana, I was a senior director at Huron Consulting Group in analytics. I was the head, head of the analytics group at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island for a number of years. I was head of analytics at the Lancaster General Health System in Pennsylvania. Um, and prior to that, I was a program manager at United Health Group for about seven years. And I also spent a fair amount of time at WebMD prior to that. So um, I've been around the I've been around the block in that respect, as you will. I currently live in uh, Bristol, a uh, lovely town with uh, with my wife, Carrie, and our very, very large dog, Bailey. If you happen to stop by, you'll probably see him on the street. He's kind of our mascot. So this is a summary of the course and what we're going to try and get through in these next seven weeks. First of all, the, 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 the issue is that organizations in almost every sector are trying to evaluate their analytics capabilities not only in general, but especially as they emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. And in order, to, in order for this to work, they have to, it is, it is essential that people get the right data in the right place at the right time. And we're going to, and the idea is to give you a foundation uh, in terms of a knowledge of analytics covering key components of the, of the analytics process and the strategies for how you're going to capture and, pit, and, and communicate information and, and the pitfalls for doing so. Now, one thing I do want to mention on this is that this is an introductory course. It is not a deep dive into either data science, data statistics, or technology. And this, the idea is to give you an overview of how these different things work, and then to give you a jumping off point if you do wish to go into any of those areas. I also believe for people who are getting to be serious about analytics, I believe it is important to be what I call uh, data and technology agnostic in that you don't want to be wedded to any one specific technical solution. You want to have a good foundation in terms of all how, how all of the solutions operate and how they can all work together. So these are our, our, our basic course objectives. We're going to be doing weekly discussions based upon the uh, textbook that you have in the syllabus. And the, and, and the various class materials. This is the textbook itself. It is Healthcare Analytics Foundations and Frontiers by Ross Molnar and Edward, Edward Rafalski. Um, uh, and it is um, mentioned in the, in the syllabus and you, can, you should be able to pick this up through the university. Um, and the, te the text is background reading. It is not, you're not going to be tested on it or examined on it specifically, but it's to give you additional context and the different things that you're all going through. And I've got, and if you look at the syllabus, there are certain suggested chapters in a certain sequence on that. If you want to sit down on a weekend and read the whole thing, you know, by all means, uh, that's, uh, it is again for, uh, for background materials. So if anyway, we'll, we're going to be having weekly discussions and lectures based upon based upon the text and also the class materials that we're going to have. You're going to be, uh, as in terms of an assignment, there's going to be an, an individual research paper, which I'll talk about, and also a group research project and presentation, which I'll, which I'll talk about. So, and again, this is essentially how the grades are going to be done. So it's going to be one third, one third, one third between the group research project, the individual research paper, and online discussions. So the research project itself, um, and this is written up in the syllabus, but this is a, this is a replication of a real world problem that I was asked to help solve um, within my, my company, within a, um, a, a prior company I was with um, at a major hospital system. So I'm just going to lay this out for you. And I'm going, to, I'm going to talk a lot about healthcare in this course, but this this is not just a healthcare analytics course. 
It is a business analytics course as well. But if you're going to get into anything complicated, if you can do it in healthcare, you can do it else, elsewhere also. But there are going to be, we're also going to be talking about some examples which do not just apply to healthcare. And also there are many analytics problems in healthcare which also apply to business. So there's a lot of crosswalk amongst them. But here's the, here's the basic problem you're going to be faced with. You're going to be, you have been, just been hired as a chief data officer in a major hospital system. This system has recently undergone a merger with another group network of hospitals in a neighboring state. And as a result, you have inherited a lot of stuff. You've got multiple staffs with two different electronic medical record systems. You have several different billing systems. You have different supply chain systems. You have three homegrown data warehouses. You have several business intelligence systems to generate reports. So you've got a mishmash of things in various levels of capability. And some of the staff are responsible for these functions are under your area, but others work at other departments across the system and you don't have complete, you don't have complete authority over them. In the meantime, your hospital system is facing crises on a number of fronts. You have, your, your patient survey ratings are poor. You have had a number of, you have, a, you've had several patient safety incidents recently, including things such as hospital, hospital infect, infections, patient, uh, patient falls, uh, uh, miscommunications amongst amongst staff. You have high, high hospital hospital acquired infections and costs. You have readmissions are out of control, and you're facing a, a, an accreditation audit by both the state and the Joint Commission, which is a uh, national accrediting body that deals with healthcare institutions. So you're already starting off in this job, and you know you're going to be having some tough days ahead of you. Um, your staff spend endless meetings trying to make sense out of the all out of all the different types of reports that are that are that are coming their way. Many of these reports are contradictory, and that and, and, and no one trusts the data. And they spend all their time in meetings arguing over what the data is trying to tell them, as opposed to actually using it to solve problems. And if you're thinking this is not a common occurrence, it is a very common occurrence. Um, I, again, I've been working in this in this field for many many years. This is a very common situation of having multiple systems, not all of which talk to each other very well, not very good handle on data, and not very good handle on, on data definitions, and people try to have to make sense of all of that. So the hospital CEO wants you to get a handle on this situation very quickly. Your job is, is, is depending upon this. So you have been asked to answer several questions. How do you assess the situation you're in and, and determine the steps that are going to be taken? So you need to do an assessment and you need to do a roadmap of, 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 of the changes that, you're, that, you're, that you want to be able to make. And one thing I would suggest to you is that, is that you look at this in a short, medium, and long-term situation. This is not something that you're going to snap your fingers and solve overnight. These are large systemic issues that are going to need to be solved in a in a careful and methodical way to get you to get the get this organization to a better place in the short term, medium term, and long term. Uh, how do you get up the data quality issues that have been plaguing the hospital system? How do you make an analy analytics a central focus of the organization and ensure that they actually see data and, and they use data as a strategic asset? How do you get to a combined view of the data and ensure that everyone is getting the same information? And how do you ensure that people are getting the right data in the right place at the right time? So they are no longer arguing over, with, over the data. They're actually using it to solve the problems that they have. So you're going to be divided up into groups of three or four, it will be depending on the size of the people in the class. And um, I expect you to call up on the material that we, that we review and to do your own research into best practices in each of these areas. Now, what I'm going to ask each group to do is to prepare a seven to 10 page research paper, as well as a presentation slide deck that was suitable for a 15 to 20 minute presentation. The idea is you are giving a, presenta you are giving a presentation to a CEO and so that person isn't going to want to dive down into each individual weed. I'd like to say, I'd like to see that within, within the paper itself, but the presentation is going to be more of a more of its more of a 10,000 foot view type of a, type of a thing. <clears throat> so uh, your and your analysis and recommendations should integrate theory, research, and your professional experience. If that, if you have if it's applicable. I'm looking for specific examples and, and, and substantiating and supporting and supporting evidence. This is a analytics this is a data driven field. I am a data driven guy. So if you have a if you have a solution and you want to be able to d d describe it 
Show me the data. I want to see how you're actually come, uh, uh, come up with things. Uh, you need to include in-text citations and references as you do with, as you do with, with, with other work that you do within, within the university. I want you to stay on topic and not run off into the weeds. I've had some students do that in the past. And I said, what are you going, what are you talking about here? Um, and I, and of course, um, I think this, this, this would go without saying, but I, you, you I, I, I would, I expect proper spelling, grammar, and a scholarly tone in the work that you, in the work that you do, not only with this project, but for everything, everything within the, uh, the course, uh, the course itself. Now, just a note about group, group projects. Uh, I've had some students come to me and say they don't like them and there are issues with them. People are getting people all, all, all to work together. I understand that. Um, the nature of work in a, in a, in professional high stakes environments is group work. And, uh, um, and even, I mean, people are sometimes concerned about, well, it's an, it's an, we've been in the middle of a pandemic. All of our courses are online. How do we get together? Well, you have Zoom, you have Teams, you have any one of the number of video conferencing and teleconferencing solutions that are out there. Please make you please make use of them. Um, and that is the nature of the way work happens these days. People work remotely. People function on Teams. I have a team meeting coming up within my own job fairly shortly, where I've got several people calling calling in. I've got I've got two people in two people in Maryland. I've got one person down in Florida. I've got one person out in California. I've had teams where I've had people coming in from all over the world. And you pull people together and you get people on the same page and you get your and you get your stuff done. Um, so this is a uh, so I see these type of group projects as a mirror for the kind of things that you want to be able to do. Now, in terms of your individual research paper, this is, is five to, again, five to seven pages on a research topic and analytics of your own choosing. I ask that you give this to me by the end of the second week uh, in terms of what your topic is going to be. And I would expect your analysis to, form, to follow the same rigor as in the research project. Then there, and then online discussions. There's going to be there's going to be an online discussion topic every week. Follow the uh, follow the uh, Canvas entries on that, and you'll and you'll be given a topic to go through every week. And um, what I'm asking people to do is to create uh, is to create a, a post every week, and then and then reply to at least uh, two other people's. Posts. And in those posts, I am expecting you to integrate theory and research. I want you to cite your sources. Uh, I want you to, to put in a respect, uh, respectable thing on that. This isn't like this. Some, I'm, I'm not looking for snarky comments on Facebook. This is uh, an academic discussion, and uh, if you're out, and I'm expecting people, and I'm expecting everybody to be able to um, contribute. And I do grade each of these uh, discussions every every um, every week. Now this is this is the class schedule. This is a fairly um, I'm not going to go through each each and each and everything on this, but you'll you'll have an idea if you go through. You'll see what the what the, what the and this is all, all listed out in the syllabus in terms of the discussion topics that the, the topics within within each class and what the various due dates are. So that there are there are due dates for um, the research paper topic. There's a due date for the for, there's a due date for drafts for the group project and the research paper and of course due dates for the uh for the actual uh research for the actual research papers and the, and also the group projects now in terms of in terms of the drafts that could be um the drafts are for your benefit and is to help get you focused and in that and, and i'm not going to grade any of any of the drafts that's not really the purpose of it i just at the very at the very least i'd like to see an outline that's that's okay just show me how you're approaching it if you want to send me a fully fleshed out paper as a draft that's in, that that's of course up to you and that uh, that's that's all fine but an, an, you know, an outline is perfectly perfectly reasonable for what i'm what i'm looking for here um but please review this class schedule and in, in, in general it's a lot of material to go through on a slide so let me just, I want to talk a little bit about data sources and data management, some of the key components of analytics, which is going to be uh, a part of what we're all, of what, what we're all getting at here. So uh, I want to talk about ma uh, major sources of data. We're going to talk about some fundamentals in master data management and metadata management and what the difference is between the two. And that is a very common um, situation for people to get, people to get confused. I'm going to talk a little bit about the data lifecycle and why that's important 
And we're going to talk a little bit about data governance and why that's important. Now, this is this is setting the tables for getting into other in, into the major topics of analytics. These are found these are foundational topics. And if an organization doesn't manage these well, you're not going to be getting data into people's hands to be able to work with effectively. So let's first of all talk with some major sources of data as far as a as far as a hospital system is concerned. And I'm going to, again, I'm focusing on a hospital system, but these are sources of data that any business that that, that that businesses would have in some way, shape, or form. So there's a lot of complexity within the various within within the various systems that are that, that are out there. So you're going to have enterprise data, which is going to tie to various pieces. You've got costing, you've got business intelligence, you've got compliance, you have networks. You have architecture. All these different things are being are being put together, and they're going to be uh, focused on different uses. Whether it's through various uh, compliance may have may have privacy issues, strategies may have costing, uh, master data management applies to data marts and warehousing, and then all of this is just expands and expands to this massive spider web of having these types of systems. Whether it be a uh, uh, a uh, electronic medical record system in a hospital, whether it be a claim system in a healthcare, uh, in a healthcare in a health insurance company, whether it be a supply management system in uh, uh, Pillsbury Foods, whether it be a um, a uh, marketing a uh, marketing system for an online company that is trying to manage their uh, their sales funnel, you know, any of these things involve these different types of data domains and how these different data domains all work together. So here you may have the different the different practices how they work together. Here you and again this is focused on on uh, on healthcare, but you can see how they each are going to have slightly different views of all these things. And so the the challenge of analytics is to try to is to try to get your hands around these different interlocking spider webs of data that are out there. So this is essentially when when we talk about analytics this is how it's all it's all delivered so look at this from the left hand side to the right hand side first of all you have a series of data sources now some of these data sources are going to be within your control some of them may be coming in from outside of your organization so you're going to have things like if, if it's a healthcare your healthcare you're going to have the hr system you're going to have a customer relationship management system whether you're a healthcare provider or whether you're a business or whether you're um well, this doesn't matter if you're a stop and shop or if you're a lifespan you're going to have a, a customer a customer relations system you're going to have an erp enterprise Rela uh, relationship planning system enterprise resource planning system you're going to have various third-party data. You're going to be streaming data in, and all of this is all this stuff is going to be coming in to a data lake where, or different different types of data repositories where these different data elements are, are going to be are going to be combined. Then you put them through various. Um, then you then you load them into an analytics infrastructure where you're dealing with everything from real-time analytics to self-service analytics, advanced analytics systems, and then finally you go on to your different reporting platforms to different users that are actually going to use the, use the data itself. So this is the technical side of it. And if you're interested in that, this is an area that you could spend an entire career on, just working on and, and trying to develop and optimize, and optimize all of this. So a, a key component for that is what's called master data management. And that is essentially taking the relationship between these various entities that are out there and so that you you can understand what is uh what is each, each each entity and how you can actually describe it so it is it is important that you are that you're able to avoid your data redundancies that you're able to ensure consistency and reliability across uh, across an organization so that you understand what each item is so it is. Um, it's it, so this this gets this gets at a point of asking yourself questions like, what is a customer? What is a patient? What is an employee? What is a physician? All uh, all of these items are master data elements, and managing them is a key component of master data management. So. So this is some of the key components. You're talking about aligning your governance and your organizational vision. You want to create a sustainable framework that uh, master data management goes through. And you need to be, and, and, you, and from this, you're going to be able to deliver consistent identifiers and attributes. And that's an important point because one of the key components of analytics, and I mentioned it in that group project, was that you have people who 
are arguing over what the data is saying. And one of the key issues, one of the key areas where organizations fall down with analytics is that they don't have a consistent handle on what things mean. They don't have a consistent handle on definitions of items and what things mean. So just focusing at it from a healthcare environment, for example, I give you an I could give you like an example of somebody may walk say say somebody walks into an emergency department at, at, at say lifespan in Newport. It's 11:45 p.m. They're seen by a uh, by a nurse intake person at 12:30 uh, a.m. They're then they then they then they then sit there. They're then admitted to the to an observation unit at 4:30 a.m. They sit in the observation unit until until um, uh, 8 p.m. Two and a half two and a half days later, they're moved to an inpatient facility. They're moved to they're moved to an inpatient stay for uh, five days, and then they're discharged to a skilled nursing facility for two weeks. What's the length of stay? Um, is it the point where they walked into the in, into the ED? Is it the point prior, uh, after that first midnight? Is it the point after that second midnight? And depending on which organization you're looking at, you're going to be measuring that differently. So the problem is I could give you four or five different different answers as to what that patient length of stay is, and they're all correct. So that's where and that's where the where the challenge of an organization comes in. They look at that example and they say, gee, is it two days? Is it three days? Is it five days? Is it eight days? You know, what is the, and, and each of them are each of them are correct in their own perspective. And then you end up with inconsistent data, you end up with inconsistent answers if you don't understand what each one of those are supposed to mean under a certain circumstance. So that's why Getting a handle on master data management is such an is such an important um, it, it's such such an important point. And here's an example of where it went terribly wrong. This is from about this is from over 20 years ago. This was a, this was a uh, a very high, high profile 190 million dollar uh, mission to Mars. And this is again over 20 years ago, so I would imagine it's cost quite a bit more now. And this was a situation where it was a a multi site team. And the and, and half the calculations in terms of the of how to get that that spacecraft from the from the Earth from the Earth to Mars were being done in um, in in English units miles feet pounds and the other half were being done in metric units uh, kilograms meters kilometers etc. And as a result, the um, one system was expecting once one one measurement one measurement parameters and it got the other. And the spacecraft crashed on the Martian surface, and the $193 million spacecraft was basically wasted uh, because the two groups couldn't keep their couldn't keep their uh, definitions straight. So these are the now in terms of again for uh, for for healthcare, these are the kinds of master data management domains that are out there. So you're talking about enterprise management, you're talking about customer relationship management, you're talking uh, and this and customer relationship in this case could be could be your your uh, patients. Uh, you could be dealing with uh, uh, member management if you if you if you have a hospital system which may run its own health plan such as such as lifespan for example. Uh, you may be dealing with 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 claims if you're if you're submitting claims to an insurance company. And you, may, and you may also be dealing, be dealing with things such as network management and, and credentialing and business intelligence and informatics. These are all different types of domains you may run into. And within a non-healthcare environment, these are very similar. You have uh, non-healthcare environments have to have to do customer relationship management. They have to do uh, they 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 have to do payments management, billing management, accounting systems. Uh, they have to do they have to check on things such as utilization management. Any of those things are, are applicable with any any within within those those various sectors. So here, one of the things that often gets people tripped up is you hear with the term master data management and metadata management. And I want to give you a very simple way to keep the various items straight. So take this 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 piece up here. Look at this look at this sentence. Jessica went to Dr. Harrison in Portsmouth on Thursday. He diagnosed her with hypertension and sent an office visit bill of $100 to her home address. So look at the nouns in that sentence. Jessica, Dr. Harrison, Portsmouth, Thursday, hypertension, office visit, and home address. All of the nouns in that sentence are master data elements. So Jessica is 
in, is in this situation, Jessica is a patient. Dr. Harrison is a physician. Portsmouth is a facility. Thursday is a date. And yes, you do maintain master data on dates because you may want to express them in different ways. An office visit is a kind of procedure. Uh, or you could think of it from another, from another uh, business environment. Instead of being a, being a procedure, say Jessica went to, went, went to stop and shop and bought a, 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 head, a head, of, head, of, head of lettuce. Uh, instead of being an office visit as a procedure, lettuce would be a product. It's the same basic idea. And her, and her home address would be an, an address table. Now, each of those items, like if you were to look at a, um, a, a data element that it attaches to, you're dealing with a, say, a patient element, a physician element, a facility element. These are getting into individual data elements that, are, that have field types and, and, and lengths and characteristics. So you may be dealing with a, a, a patient identifier, which is a numeric value, a patient name is a text value, a, uh, a patient address is a, is, a, is, a, is a text value. Those are metadata elements. So master data is data about your, your, um, your items at a, very, at a very high level to be able to, be able to, to, uh, um, to manage how different things are working through. Metadata is essentially data about data. It is descriptive data. It is for those of us who've worked in databases all, all of our lives. It is probably something we're more familiar with than master data. I work with a lot of database administrators, and they can they can talk for talk forever about metadata. I start talking to them about master data. They start staring at their feet because they're not really quite sure what to do with it. But master data is um, essentially describing things from a, from a business use perspective. So let's let's look at. I want to I want to mention mention one thing also about about Jessica. I mentioned she's the she's the person who went to the physician. Now let's say for example that Jessica Jessica was born in 1967. She got she got a. Now let's say for example that this place in Portsmouth is actually has an affiliation with University of Massachusetts. Let's just 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 hold out with me for there there for a second. So let's say for example. She got her, Jessica happened to get her bachelor's degree at, at, at UMass Amherst in 1989. She does yearly alumni donations. She got her MD from UMass Medical Center in 1997. She got her ear nose, she's an ear nose and throat specialist herself at, um, at, at UMass Medical. She is a professor teaching at the UMass Medical School as an assistant professor. She is married in 1991. She got her postdoc from the University of Lowell in 2000, from, the, from UMass Lowell in 2018. And she has a daughter, Valerie, born in 1999, who was a student at UMass Dartmouth in 2017. So here you have a scenario where a Jessica is, is in multiple systems. She is a patient, a physician, an employee, a faculty member, a parent, an alum, and a donor all at the same time. And it's a question of which way you're going to represent her and which master data element you're going to represent her is what's going to be key here. So within each of the master data elements and within an, an, an analytic system, there is a, there's a general concept I want to mention to you, and this is called the data life cycle, where a data, a data element does have a set life cycle for it. It comes from its various sources. It is run through a, it is essentially staged into a destination. So you may have a situation where data is at a certain level of granularity and it may be, it may be summarized or rolled up to put into a, into a destination. You then, as a result of that, you need to put in place monitoring and, and, and controlling processes, such as how the definitions are managed, how the, who, who has access to it when, uh, how, it's, how it's being managed, who it's being, who it's being given to, who it's being kept from in some, in some situations. All of that is via a, uh, a, um, a monitoring uh, control process. And then, and then finally, the uh, data, once that is, is, is put through, the data is put into, a, um, uh, the, into the hands of the, of the appropriate end users who you, who you expect to use that data in a, in a way that makes sense for them. And that's essentially the use and operate. And then, and then that, that data may or may not be kept. It may, it may be retired. It may be archived. And then it goes right back to the very beginning again. So you have that kind of cycle. And a key component around all of this is what's called data governance. And that is, uh, and that if you look at your at your at your data and your data and and um, analytics uh, functions, 
Think of it as a house. So you have your overall strategy as the roof on the house and you have your data governance and your technology architecture. architectures are, the, the technology architecture is the foundation for the house. The data governance is the base for the roof on the house. And then you have all of your different components within that, whether it be your metadata, whether it be your, uh, your report management, whether it be your security management, all these things are essentially rooms in the house, but you have to have the room, but you have to have the, the roof and the foundation in place to be able to manage that effectively. So there is um, a YouTube video that is, just gives you a very, uh, again, a very brief outline on master data management. And I, I'd like for you to, I, I'd like for you to watch that. It's only, it's a, it's a relatively short, it's about a two minute video. Uh, and that, that, that should give you, should give you a, a, a nice foundation. And then, um, then uh, there is a uh, dis discussion item this week, which I'd like you to fill out, which, which, which is also dealing with master and meta metadata management. I'd like your thoughts on that. And, um, and so if you could please do that, and, and, and that's, that has to be done within, within the next week. So if you could please get to that, and um, I will be uh, online next week with the next topic. So uh, thank you all very much.